Welcome back to One Piece Anime Re-Review, episode number 64. Yep. <laughs> 64. Okay, in the case of this one, we're covering episodes 798 to 800. Now, okay, you might think, okay, is there any new characters making debut this one? One. Just one. She makes her debut in episode 800, and she's only here for a few episodes, and that is it for her. As far as I can tell, she doesn't even have seen or mentioned again, even after this arc wraps up. Yeah, it's complete, and I will get to that more to her in a bit. So, in the case of what happens episodes, well, we have the start of the fight between Luffy and Cracker, where they fight for quite a while, going to gear 2, and then he looks like he bleeds. Like, oh, he's beaten? And then we see something breaking out of what, whatever this thing is. And it turns out this is not actually Cracker. This giant man we thought was Cracker? Nope, not him. It was his armor. The actual Cracker is, is basically a much more smaller guy. He seems like an average height for a guy. He looks like he's about six foot five, got is massively ripped, and he's only forty five years old. Appearance wise, he does not look forty five. Yet yeah, he is. And he's like, "Oh, that was my armor." And my 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 one opposer was by the way, he's worth a hundred and fifty million berries, higher than Luffy's. And he his his one poster is simply his armor, not his actual face. Also, his hair has since to crackle. Yep. And they, and they basically fight for the next few episodes uh, in this one. And they the fight doesn't wrap up for quite a while. Yes, if you're curious, though, when in the world does a fight between Cracker and Luffy officially wrap up? Per se? Hmm. Basically, he's defeated by episode 106. So, basically, he'll be finished up pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he'll be done by this batch episode. So don't worry about that. I'll find out about that when I get to episode 106. So Luffy just spends a lot of time when he goes to gear four, and then he basically just 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 wails through the rest of Cracker soldiers and continue makes more. Oh yeah, he reveals he ate the biscuit biscuit fruit. At first, oh, say, oh, I got Fowl's arms. Nope, just biscuit biscuit. So he's able to create more biscuits. And his thing is like, oh, the art of biscuits and history biscuits. I'm like, who gives a crap about that? Just basically fight you, moron. And apparently he doesn't like pain. I'm like, wow, did you not did you not suffer any punishment by your own mother when you were younger, man? Who the heck freaking knows? We do have a brief scene here of of Brooke and Pedro. Well, first they see a biscuit soldier, and then they come across the same biscuit soldier where Brooke uses a move to basically slice open things back so they're able to hide inside. And they'll leave friends for that though, and that's pretty much it when it comes to Pedro and Brooks involvement in these episodes. We do see we do see the first appearance of the mirror world. This is where Chopper and Carrot are. 
Also, these two have got chains on their on their ankles. Yes, chains. And they walk around, look in various mirrors. This is also where basically carrots are calling carrot, excuse me, carrot calling Chopper, Chobro after basically him suggesting calling him Big Brother Chopper because he is technically older than he she is. He is two years older than Carrot. Carrot is fifteen, the same age Chopper was when he first joined the crew, and Chopper is currently seventeen years old. Yep, and. He, of course, does not have a problem being called Cho Bro. Not really. So, it's it, it's good. And I thought I thought the scene with him was so adorable. And it's no denying Kara is my personal favorite characters. For female characters. And she's even in the most recent chapter of the series. And I have this really good feeling that at, that during the Aftermath stuff, she, along with various other characters, will be official members of the crew very soon. Basically expanding the crew from, like, nine uh basically about 10 to about maybe about 15 or 20 people but who knows yep now if i move on to we have a brief thing with with big mom we see her just sitting in her chair just being informed that the german six has arrived and then we finally see the german six all the members of the family minus sanji's mom she is not here Sora is not in these episodes Yes, yeah, Sora is 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 basically the mother of Sanji and his four his three brothers and his sister Rinju, and she's also the the wife of Judge. Yes, they don't go into her backstory until later on. And here's the interesting when it comes to Sanji. Sanji gets his blonde hair from his mom. Yep, he seriously does. His not his sister, from what I can tell, kind of looks like her mom. But in the case of the brothers, oh no, they look like Sanji and a little bit like the father. So, appearance-wise, basically, Sanji physically looks like his father. Except clean, much more clean, less clean shaven. Except he gets his hair from his mom. So, they all basically sit down to have dinner after all five of them, well, the five of six are basically reunited. Then, of course, basically, he's enjoying his meal problem. He, of course, does not want to talk to his brothers all due to the fact of what they did to him when they were children. Basically, they dared beat the crap out of him just because he didn't have cybernetic enhancements to him. Yes, seriously. That is the reason why they constantly beat him up when he was a kid. So, apparently, like, he's enjoying his food. And then, of course, basically, Neji apparently gets up. I think it's Neji Angie gets upset at the fact that to his perspective doesn't taste very good. So, he calls the head chef. We have debut of the only new character in this episode. First period, episode 8. Hundred, and her name is Cosette. Uh, Cosetti. Mm-hmm. Yep. And basically, she gets chastised over the the food, and then Neji does the unthinkable. And this basically gets Sanji upset. He throws up, tries to throw a plate at the plate, his own plate at her. He tells him, "Don't move." Basically, probably hit. And then Sanji catches the plate and he says, Were you trying to scar this woman, this beautiful woman's face? And Ringu smiles at this. Yes, I'm sure his brothers probably hated the fact that he did this. But from Ringu's perspective, she smiled at the fact that, well, saved a woman's life. And of course, Sanji would never admit the fact his sister is very beautiful. Heck, Brooke admits she's hot. <laughs> yes. Or she he even once basically asked to see her panties. <laughs> yes. I mean, I enjoy that little aspect where Riju, where he, she actually enjoys Sanji's gentleman side of himself, where he's basically the chivalry nature. But that's the three episodes for you. Yep. Not much new act, new, a lot, new, there's some new stuff here, but not a lot. Yes, I would probably say that you probably think, okay, is there anything new with Peckham's this one? Not really, no. It's most like it's most so Luke versus Cracker a lot of the time, and a little bit with Sanji. We're gonna basically develop more in the next couple episodes. Okay, so that's it for single of you. Next one's gonna be a comic corner, and after that will be the rising of the shield hero. And if there's time, I might come back to more episodes of this. Okay, next video. Bye.